Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Service Without Excuses podcast. Podcast. I'm sorry, I have Eric Sprague here tonight. Is am I saying that right, Sprague or Sprague? Sprague. Sprague. All right, well, I screwed that one up right off the bat. Want to you're, not, you're not the first, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> my, okay. my last name is Lion, but people, if you're in Europe, they they call Leon. It's L Y O N. Uh, but they think it's you know Leon or but whatever they they it it gets confusing it definitely does so understandable. So I have Eric on here today. He does, he offers something that I think is remarkable and I think is going to be a new change in the future. Personally, um, I came from a diverse background of running other companies for other people and then of course having my own. And one of the focuses we had. Uh, was making sure we had morning meetings. Uh, when I had my second business, it was the most frustrating part that I had a partner that wasn't always as guild toward it, but I believed morning meetings and, and meetings in general kept everybody on the same page. It certainly kept our technicians and our employees uh, to stay with us for a long period of time. And like we discussed before, uh, they made offers because they knew there were good guys above and they just wouldn't leave because the work environment was very good. And we were always communicating. And I believe in life, period, no matter what you're involved with, business, personal life, um, you need to communicate correctly. So he has a program called Morning Meeting Text, and we're going to get a little bit more into this. But Eric, welcome, my friend. How are you today? I'm doing great, Rob. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. So tell our listeners a little bit about your background, how you guys uh, got here, you and your partner. And it's it's a sure. pretty good story, man. I was I was reading into it. I, I listened to the podcast, the Blue Collar Nation podcast, which we're going to put in the links afterwards. Um, okay. is an excellent, excellent. Uh, and I, I'm, a, I'm a technician at heart because that's where I started. So I love hearing, you know, the tech talk and things like that. And uh, I, I'm just going back and kind of it makes me revisit some really good memories for sure. <laughs> well, we got some good memories and some not so good. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, Larry, my business partner and I, we were college roommates at a place called Keene State College in New Hampshire. And we majored in lifting weights and drinking beer pretty much. <laughs> and uh, we got, got an education somewhere along the way. But, you know, we had always been good friends and we both moved to Southern California after college because we just wanted to be warmer, you know. And um, so, you know, we both took corporate jobs. He had one doing his thing up near L.A. I lived in San Diego doing mine and we both did that for, you know, over a decade. And then I just got burned out. I was traveling the world all over the place and I was just like, I just need something closer to home. So I started originally an air duct cleaning business, just, just me. And, um, you know, quickly people are saying, Hey, can you clean carpet? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm just like, um, sure, I'll figure it out, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and then I was just getting overwhelmed. So then Larry, maybe six months after I started, he joined me and then we started Shamrock Cleaning and Restoration, which we had for 11 years, I think, 11 years, built it up. Uh, at our height, we had about, I think, 29 employees. Wow. And uh, we sold it to uh, a, a mutual friend who also kind of had a restoration business, very similar in culture to ours. Uh, I was getting burned out because I lived in Utah by then, and I was commuting every week back and forth. Oh, my. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to be home more. So, we sold and um, kind of, you know, Larry stayed with that company and it was marketing to all the, our referral sources, you know, making sure that they, they, um, they stayed with the co the new company. I went off and started doing consulting for cleaning and restoration companies for, for like a year. And then I just called Larry and was like, Hey man, I have this idea for these morning meetings that you and I grew our business on that we could do these in video and share them with everybody because as I was consulting, I was seeing that none of the people that I was consulting had a morning meeting. And every day at every one of these businesses was just sheer chaos. And the culture sucked and the boss was always mad. And, you know, then the employees felt underappreciated and there are all these things. And look, the, the reason I recognized it so well is because that's how our business was in the early years too. You know, Larry and I were hung up on job costing, p &L, getting stuff done, viewing people like chess pieces, you know, and our culture was admittedly quite horrible for many, many years. And how we fixed it was I went and got some leadership training and then we started having a daily morning meeting and I went all the way the other way, Rob. Everything about our business was about our people. 
Like, I just figured if I poured everything into those people, they would then in turn pour everything about our culture into our clients. And that's when we started to really blow up. You know, once we got that, that total buy-in of the mission statement and the vision for the company and our company culture and holding each other accountable, but in a, a good way, not, not in an ugly way. And um, yeah, so after we sold, it just kept, I, A, I missed doing the morning meeting. Honestly, Rob, I liked doing it. It had become my, honestly, it became my primary job in many ways. Um, and I just wanted I just saw a need. So I, we just started doing it. It's, it's like a five minute video meeting every day where I do the same meetings that I did in front of our team, which was all about them, not really about us. You know, think about a, a, a culture is big. So there's a company called Zappos. Uh, Tony Shea left the world not too long ago, but Zappos was acquired by Amazon years ago. But Amazon's always been really focused on on a lot of the employees. As they grew, they have some snags and things like that but zappos is really focused on the culture of their of their company i I was at a seminar once where tony was speaking and um he was really really into and and so far as much as they would actually give you money to leave yeah it you know in like the first week and and i mean we're talking two hundred dollars here i'm talking like two thousand dollars to get you to go up and just walk away and and it was an experiment and it was worth it to them because they figured what are we going to invest in our employees if they're not happy if they're not a good fit for us in the, in the first place why don't we have this system in place we're already going to spend it if they stay and they leave why don't we try it and they found that you know as they made things better for their technicians or for the employees call center whatever that was that um people stayed. People stayed longer and longer. Google, same thing. I mean, you will go to Google there. You know, I think you're from Southern California. You live in Southern California. You're, you know, they, they cater to their every whim because they want them as productive as possible. And they all want, and of course they have to be happy or they're not going to be productive. They're not going to be a valuable asset to a company, no matter who it is. It could be Google or, or Jimmy's hot dog stand. If your people are not happy, uh, they're not going to be. So I totally subscribe to what you're saying and, and it, it, it approves how much more it works when people are happier on a grand scale on a huge scale. Yeah. You know, what improves is that you're happier as the owner. You know, I hear all these guys that they would be like, um, you know, everything's their team's fault. You, you know, it's like, they're always complaining about their guys. And I always kind of sit there and chuckle to myself because look, I've done that when I was younger and I was learning, it was always their fault. And the reality was that until I took extreme ownership and Larry did the same, that every single problem in our business was our fault. Like when we started going off that premise that no matter what boneheaded thing somebody did, at the end of the day, it's our fault because we either hired them or we didn't train them right or whatever. All of a sudden, you're, you change when you adopt that mentality. You know, I would always hear, and this was kind of like, the, the beginnings of our, our morning meeting where it was all about the team was I'd hear all these other trades guys. We had plumbers that were friends, HVAC guys, electricians, and, you know, we'd go hang out and play golf or whatever. And they'd just be railing on their guys. And they'd be like, you know, you know, the school system failed them. Their parents failed them. And, you know, now I have them. And that got me thinking, it's like, well, okay. So their parents failed them. The school system failed them. Well, then the only person left to not fail them is, is me (laughs) like then it's my job so really what we built within shamrock was a life skills academy on a daily basis for our team members and when you invest in somebody like that when it's all about them the, the results that you get are so much better than if you're just doing x's and o's and dollars and cents it's like not even funny it's a whole different level and uh i i believe strongly in that you know, one of the words you just use team members. So one of the two things I love to hire personally, if I had my options were people that had played sports, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe in high school, college, I even had a guy that was pro for a short period of time, or military, um, for two reasons. And you just talked about extreme ownership. And it's a brilliant book. And it really, you know, if you don't have the mentality before you read that book, you really get it. These guys had their lives on the line in battle. Um, And extreme ownership of something was 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 vitally important. Um, but I, 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 teamwork as an, as a person that has played sports, 
it is about the team. You know, people rave about, you know, my wife loves Tom Brady. Okay. She is a Brady fan from all the way back at Michigan. And then of course in New England and now down there and he pulled it off, but Brady, you'd be the first one to tell you, yeah, I might be a pretty good guy, but without the guys around me, I'm not going to be able to perform. And it's a camaraderie between that team. They're not employees. They're your teammates because you have to rely on the other teammate. If Tom Brady doesn't have somebody to block the line in front, he's getting taken out. Well, Tom's 43, I believe, you know, he takes a good hit. It's probably done. So he has to have a great front line. He has to have great receivers to be able to catch the the throws because he, he has a tendency to overthrow. He has worked this entire team concept. And when you listen to Tom talk about it now, he doesn't throw it in, in Bill Belichick's face because he's not that kind of guy. But what he does say is I've been able to create a team here and the coach and the staff have allowed me to take my creative ideas and my teamwork mentality of every man's got to put 150% into it. But if they do, we'll win, we'll win the big reward, which for their case was the Super Bowl this year. So it's a team atmosphere, no matter what you do. I can't see not thinking that way. I agree with you because I tried to be the same way with our guys. You know, we try to have important. They weren't employees. You know, if they had personal issues, it's not like I wanted to get involved in their personal life. But if you've ever run a business, anything sizable, you become a mini unpaid and probably uneducated therapist at some point in time because they have things going on in their own life that you're not aware of. And you could tell that there's maybe some performance issues there. There's something going on, but you don't know. And you have to sometimes say, everything okay? You're all right? Do you need something? And I've had to go the extra mile more than once and was willing to do so and would do it in a heartbeat again for that person. Why? Because they're my teammate. Even though it was my company, I still treated like every we're all on the same playing field here, man. Whether I'm the one that took the risk to start it, but we're all on the same playing field in this company. Well, when you build that much social capital with them, they're going to run through a wall for you. You know, when you just treat them like an employee, which I've done. I mean, when I was younger, I did. I was trained that way myself. So it's like, oh, you know, you get him here and her there, and you, you know, once I started really, and look, you know most of my employees were millennials. They're way younger. They're closer to my kid's age than my own age. So you said therapist. I was in my mind when you said that I was saying parent or quasi parent in my, in my head, because, you know, I, I think anybody that worked for me would say that I was very parental in in many ways. I think that's just my natural way, but, you know, I wanted to make sure that they felt cared for, and well-trained, but at the same time held accountable. That, that was my goal. Like it wasn't, you know, cause a lot of people will hear me talk about, you know, training soft skills and investing in the team. They think like, oh, Eric must be soft. Like he must be weak. I mean, anybody that's worked for me will, will tell you that that was not the case. Like, you know, I mean, I expected a lot and I wasn't going to take any BS, but at the same time, like I made sure you knew I cared about you as a person. You know, I mean, and those are the companies that like you see it, like when you go to these other service companies where they're thriving, there's always that kind of feel in the air of team and family. Like, I don't, I don't like the family per se, but you know, but it does feel like a family, a work family. It's different than a regular family, but um, I think you need that to get people to stay because especially in the trades, you can, you can leave my company, Rob, and go to your company and have a job in an hour, right? At least in Southern California. I mean, any one of my guys that was certified in water damage restoration, they could have literally said, I quit, driven their car one mile to my competitor, and then they would have hired them on the spot. Yeah. So I'm working every day against that. And you did all the heavy lifting. Totally. So what am I doing then by investing in them and caring in them and then consistently training them, not only for stuff that's good for work, but good for stuff that in just in their life, like we did a lot of disc personality training, like a lot of that. And then they feel valued. So they're not going to drive, they're not going to leave and just drive across the street for $2 more. You know, I had guys that would say that to me all the time, Eric, you realize I can make five bucks more an hour at XYZ company. I'm like, okay. They're like, yeah, I'm not going. I get too much value here. Right. Cool. 
and here's one of the advantages too, and and people bag on millennials left and right. I just interviewed one at my friend's restoration company in Central New Jersey, and he is 100% age, motivated, driven. But I says I I talked to him briefly beforehand, just to get into his head before we did the podcast, and I said you know, what motivates you? And I says, first of all, just so you know, I'm not one of those guys that bags on millennials and says, this is whatever, because I, I do realize you want to do something that has purpose to it. Seth Godin talks, we want to have purpose to our work. Um, he talks about marketing, but it's in life. And they want to make a difference. They want to know they're an integral part of the company. They want to know that. And I got to tell you, that's a better trait than I had. And I'm near 50 years of age. Um, because our, in my generation, it was work hard, show up every day, move up the chain, do the job no excuses yeah well, I'm, saying, I'm roughly the same age as you and I'm, i felt the same way and that was a major mind shift for me to get my head around i had to learn the millennials i had to take time and study and figure out well, what drives these guys you know and everybody craps on them but i had amazing millennial team members like they did so much like because what did we do? We did water damage restoration, Rob, like you do, right? Right. So what is that? Well, that's getting called out of bed at two in the morning. That's crawling around in crap water underneath the house in a cold, dark uh, crawl space. It, it's thankless work, right, man? It's hard. And it's easy to just say, like, this is such a crap job. So, you know, we would make sure that we reframed that in the morning meetings to we're helping people. We're like the fire department. We're there when they need us. Exactly. You know, and I'm building their confidence and I'm building the vision. And I mean, that wasn't just BS. We truly believe that we're helping people in their time of need. And they responded very, very well to that message, more so than we crawl around in sewage water for money. Right. So here's here's something to look at um, going into your your company. And I want you to explain a little bit more about what you guys do, because that frame, like we talked about, about outsourcing what you're not best at. And I, again, I felt I was pretty good at it. And, and the feedback I would get was pretty good about it, but I had better things to do with my time necessarily on every given day. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a workaholic. I've been, I'll probably die a workaholic. It's just, it's the way I am. And I'll, and I don't know how not to do two or three things at the same time because I have that. And a lot of entrepreneurs have that. Um, you need to really focus. And, and it was a hard lesson. I'm sure you probably learned the lesson we all have at some point. You're not great at everything. So why, why are you doing it? You're only good at certain things. Um, they might be focused on a few particular things. We all have those strong points, but we also have those weak points that, are, that balance it out. One of the weak points, in my opinion, is effective meetings and effective um, offsite necessarily, not in front of a person. Because listen, they're going to yes, people, no matter what generation, they're going to yes, their supervisors or bosses to death. And they're going to say, yeah, it's coming from him. But when it's coming from somebody else, and you've done, I've done as a consultant and a coach, I'll go into a facility. And the one thing I will do, and I do more than ever, is I go in there and I, I run a meeting in the morning because I'm not the boss. And the first thing that the owner of the company will say is, I can't get these guys to do this, 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 no matter what I do, it doesn't happen. So they'll explain it to me and I'll sit down, think about it and plan a strategy and go, okay, got it. Uh, when do you need me there? Well, can you come in two weeks? No problem. Show up there in two weeks and the meeting is 100% different. Why? Because I'm looking at it from an outside perspective. I'm, I'm giving the information that they want me to do and, and saying and processing it and then looking at it and going, okay, you're looking at it from the guy that's signing the paychecks, that's responsible for payroll, responsible for the benefits, responsible for new jobs coming in, workflow, efficiency, um, injuries, everything. But you can't be focused on all of this stuff and be effective. It's not possible. You're 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 this you're called something. It's called a human being, and you can't be all these hats. And the smart people, the most successful people in the world, know that. My whole long rant is coming back to this point here. What I think you offer is taking that thought of having your employees um, in front of you day in and day out and, and thinking you're being effective to them really is I think you're doing both of yourselves a disservice. I think as an owner of the company, you're doing yourself a disservice. I feel you're doing a tremendous disservice to them because you're not, your brain's not in it. You're thinking about five other things. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll, I'll say a couple things on that. So first of all, one of the reasons that they'll listen to me 
on the video opposed to the boss is they don't know my bad habits. They, they know the boss's bad habits so that when the boss says this, that, or the other, they're going, that guy's a hypocrite. He does that himself. Right. right? So, so immediately by outsourcing that it's more powerful to have somebody else says it. it's like when your dad tells you something, it's BS, but when the neighbor says it to you, you listen and you do <laughs> do it right. Because sure. it's not your dad. So there's an element of that. And, and I hear that from my clients. They're just like, Eric, I can't believe it. Like they listen to everything you say in these videos, like it's gospel. I've been saying the same stuff for 10 years and nobody will do it. And it's like, well, that's part of the beauty of, of outsourcing, right? They, that's why consultants are called in. It's an outside set of eyes and it's an outside perspective that the guys often will listen to. Uh, the other thing is, is that by the time I started getting really into this, Rob, like you said, all these things to do. I, I had scaled the business, our business to the point where that was my thing to do, right? Like I, I didn't have to do much else. Like I had somebody already to do all those things that you just said, you know? So I could then, I put a lot of time, energy, and money into what is now these meetings. I got John Maxwell certified. I was getting coached. I was doing all this stuff. I was spending tons of hours a week doing lesson preparation, you know, and all of that work back then is what morning tech meeting is now, right? So unless you're willing to do that on your own, why would you not outsource it for, you know, a pretty measly amount per month? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. I mean, the only reason I did it is because I couldn't buy it. Nobody was selling it. So therefore I had to, buy, I had to do it. You know, we both have a common friend, Howard Partridge, and I, I know you know him very, you know him much better than I do. So I yeah. sent my staff down there, my office manager, my sales rep, and they loved it. They went down to Sugarland, I guess it is, outside of Houston. Yep. And um, first thing they said to me is, we learned this, 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 and this. And what you just said, I'm going, my God, I've been talking about this stuff for three months. Yeah. And they're Howard like, said and, it. But Howard said it, and Howard's staff said, and, and Howard is we need, Howard's a great speaker. Yes. So whatever he said and the staff said, and and they they got you know they took the tour of the of the, of the operation, which I understand is very impressive. I've never been there myself, but they it is, went. It's great. Yeah. And, and they said you got to see how. I mean, we're laid out nice, but my God, you got to see how efficient he is. He he makes us look like we're 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 good with our workflow, but we look like poppers compared to this guy when it comes to efficiency. So it really is getting that outside view. Um, I was, I was thrilled by the way, it was money well spent membership well spent because for them to come back energized and seeing it from an outside person that is a true expert has done it from scratch, say it as well, not the guy you're reporting to every day or whatever it happens to be um, is, is hugely impactful in my opinion. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I, you, you, you hear me say it all the time on the podcast or anybody that knows me at all. Howard Partridge is the reason for Larry and my success. I mean, he was our mentor. We made a big fat check to him every single month for four or five years straight. Best money I spent every month. And, you know, Larry and I are a lot of things, but we're good at implementing. So he, we, we went, we would go every three months to Houston to the conference. We would go to every single time they went to clean as a whistle to do the tour, even though we'd seen it a million times, we'd go again because we might pick something up that we're not doing. And then we just modeled ourselves after his system. I mean, that, it's just, it's R and D research and, 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 uh, and development, you know, it's just, I'm just going to take what he's doing and then I'm going to do it. I literally yeah. have his stuff. Phenomenal yeah. product stuff sitting in the top. And then, you know, I'm going to give a little pitch if you don't mind. So please, I, I don't know if you know, but Howard's a dear, become a dear friend to me at, at this point. You know, we vacationed in the Caribbean last year. We, we, we you know, we, we talk on the phone. So he and I and Larry now, we just did our first webinar last week. We are now running a, like a program within Inner Circle called Get Off the Truck. For all those guys that have just been stuck on the truck and they can't, you know, they can't get where they want to go. They know where they want to go. So I'm going to be running a weekly pod. He has these pods within the inner circle where people can go for a specific, like Ellen Rohr one, runs one for finance. And I'm going to be running one for service businesses called Get Off the Truck. 
And, you know, it's just, if you're, I always say this, like if you, you're two or three years in and you're not off the truck, but you actually want to be, uh, you probably should seek outside help at that True. point. You, you know, I mean, if you want to be on the truck, that's noble. I have no problem with that. Like for me, that was never the goal. I always wanted to scale. I was on the truck way more than two or three years, by the way. Like it took me way longer than that to, to get off. Yeah, it's it, one of the tiny advantages I personally had was I ran a multi-truck company. So I yeah. knew, even though I spent marketing like dollars like a drunken sailor when it came to Yellow Pages advertising, you know, they didn't, kids, they don't even know what that is today. But yeah. back in the day, we had to put a, an ad in, in a phone book and people had to pick up the phone book and God willing, they'd give you a call and you spent way too much um, money. But um, back in those days, you, you did whatever you had to do. But I also had a clear path on how to get off of it. So we, that's how our paths seem to have crossed at strategies one time because I'd already done that. But Steve refocus me. He's like, you already have all the skills, man. You already know you've been trained. You've run this. I've looked into you. I, I, get, I, it, it's, you don't, this is where you need to refocus. You're not focusing on starting a business. You're focused on running a business. You didn't right. know anything about starting a business. It's come to strategies. My first time I forget, I think it was in Langhorn here and it was, I was back four or five times. I mean, by the time I got done with it, I kept going back and back. And people were like, why do you need to come back? Just because it changes. And and like you just said before, how much of the information are you really picking up? I don't care how bright and how good you think you are. You're not picking up more than 15% of it. Well, you're drinking from a fire hose for a whole week. Right. You're only going to take in the big points that really probably are your biggest pain points at that given time. So, um, you know, I've always said, and look, you know, my money I spent with Howard Partridge was the best money ever. But if I could only do one thing, strategies for success would have been the one thing that I tell every, like, if you can only do one training your whole life for a service business, go to strategies. I've done franchise training, didn't even come close yeah. to what they give you. And, and honestly, it's, 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 they would, part of that program used to be used for training franchises. So it's not even like you're not getting, you're getting everything and then some on steroids in real time on a program like that. So it's great. I think we're just about to end of time. Is there anything else you'd like to leave us with any words of yeah. advice? Also, how can our listeners get a hold of you? And yeah. um, the best way to find it, blue collar nation is their podcast. It is freaking awesome. Um, I've listened to it again. I just love the banter. Personally, for me, I love it because it's real and it, and I've experienced it. So I, I could sit there and listen to that and go, yeah, you know, that that's that's good stuff because it it feels good. And it feels real and organic. And if you've ever lived that and if you've been on that side, you know what that feeling is. It's like a good team huddle at the end of, end of something. So please. Yeah. yeah. For anybody that's old enough, Larry and I try to be the click and clack of home service businesses. <laughs> you know, like we're kind of kind of like car talk that way. <laughs> but uh uh, no, a couple things, Rob, and I appreciate you giving me the time to let everybody know what we're doing. So, you know, morningtechmeeting.com is the place to go to check out the video training I'm talking about. Every single day you get five to six minute videos. I purposely have them very short so that guys can watch them on their phones. Like it does, ideally, if you can all meet together, that's great. That's the right. best way. But look, we all know that that doesn't happen every day. And some businesses that can't happen at all because maybe they work in shifts, whatever. So we actually can either, you know, send one email to a company and they have a morning meeting, or we can send it via text to every technician or wow. every employee so they can watch it. And then we can actually report back to the ownership who's watching and who's not. Oh my God, seriously? Yeah. And then there's a quiz every Friday and the quiz isn't very hard, but it's just hard enough that they had to pay attention and watch the videos during the week, right? So, and then we can report that to the owners as well. So part of the thing is we're trying to keep, can re create convenience for the owner that they don't have to get the lessons going. They don't have to be involved on a daily basis if they just can't. Like we're trying to make it easy so that the guys are getting what they need from me. And then, you know, obviously it's up to the owner to make sure it's being implemented. You know, I, I can't help you with that through the video, but, um, and then we have, so go to morningtechmedia.com and, um, 
we're actually raising prices in April. So if people want to go, go soon because the price is going up. And that kind of segues me into April. We're having the experience in Charleston for those who, is it all carpet cleaners listening to this or is it everybody? It's everybody. I got okay, plumbers yeah. that listen to this. And okay. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, the, the big carpet and restoration trade show is coming up in April and we're, we're going to have a booth there and we are going to unveil morning tech meeting in Spanish as well. Oh, wow. That's uh, we're, awesome. We're partnering with a, a good friend of ours who has a restoration company in, um, in in Florida, and he's Colombian. He actually was our first client ever. He was a Howard Partridge guy with us. And, you know, he had it about a year, and he just called me up one day, and he's like, Eric, you know, this is huge for us. I mean, they have about 50 employees. He's like, we use it all the time, but, you know, I just can't help thinking it needs to be done in Spanish, too. So, we are going to unveil the Spanish speaking portion as well at the experience. So we're pretty, pretty stoked about that. You know, I think one of the importance of that is that is the biggest speaking language in the world. Yeah. And there is more, you know, it's, it's depending on where you are in the country, like in New York, it was massive. In Philadelphia, it was massive. So if you're in an urban area in particular, you know, and you're hiring your employees and bringing people in, having the option to, to, to parlay that information into Spanish, I think is, is, is way of thinking ahead. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And there's, well, look, you know, let's get real. Like just a lot of the trades, there's a lot of Spanish speaking, you know, Spanish as a primary language, people Definitely. working. And uh, it also opens up new markets for us, like janitorial maid service landscaping, which historically, at least in Southern California are generally Hispanic labor force. Right. And uh, we kept getting asked about it, but we just didn't have the right person to do it. But now, now with George, we do. So we're, we're pretty stoked about that. Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, congratulations on your Thank you. success in the past. And I think what you're offering and what people need, this is something you really need to. And anybody that's listening to this, because way more people listen to it than, than the people that see it. But this is something you really want to outsource. I talk about review management software as being something you want to outsource. Don't go handing somebody postcards if thinking that's going to happen. You got to automate it. This is part of that automation in a business, in my opinion, is having these things outsourced. We're in a day and age at this point where things like this can be a vital, vital, impressive tool to your employees and your technicians, your staff right down to management, I'm sure it's just, it's, it's a, it's can be a very powerful tool and you should use it. So I'm going to put all of Eric's information in the uh, show notes um, with all the other content and please feel free to reach out to him and talk to him or come to visit him at the experience if you're there. And uh, Eric, again, my friend, thank you so much. This is an awesome interview. I, I really learned a lot. Thank you. I really, really appreciate you, Rob, having me on. It's very uh, nice. You're welcome, thank sir. You. Have a great day. Uh, thank you. Thank you.